What is a dying tradition you believe should be preserved? Castles. No one builds a good castle anymore. I mean sure there are castle like buildings but not a good 11 foot thick wall of stone castle. This has always been on my if I was insanely wealthy list. I would build an honest to god castle in the same style as they did in the 12th century. Traditional animation. A lot of the big animation studios claim it's too expensive and time consuming but if you look at their budgets and how long it can take to render CG animated films then it's about the same difference. Yeah, I noticed when Disney shifted from traditional animation to CG, I really miss having traditionally animated films in the theater every year. Whenever I travel, I love to send postcards to my young family members. Sometimes I go to an antique store and find vintage postcards from the area I'm visiting. I've gotten positive feedback, they all seem to think it's neat to get them, but recently I received one from a young family member and it was a nice surprise. Canning and preserving food. I grew up doing this and it's something I still do. There's nothing like eating chili in the winter with tomato juice you made yourself or eating homemade strawberry jelly. My friends didn't grow up in that lifestyle but enjoy when I bring them fresh jelly in the spring. This is actually making a comeback. Not the Kardashians kind either. Lots of colleges and co-ops are offering classes in food preservation. And not just canning. My wife teaches a canning class. I teach an intro meat preservation class. Home economics as they used to call it, learning the basics of cooking, baking, sewing, cleaning and how to manage a household budget. They are useful and important things to know no matter who you are. Basic life skills would kill as a course in this day and age. Learn to cook from ingredients you won't feel bad for using. Learn how to fix things you own, like cars and some electronics. Learn how to balance a checkbook and budget. Bonfire night in the UK. Every year it's harder to find a bonfire, and Halloween is taking its place. Handwritten letters. I'm not sad to see the greeting industry die. Frick $6 for a freaking card. And I say this as a former Hallmark employee, but I wish it was more common to send handwritten letters. They're treasured in a way you can never treasure an email. Having something handwritten is also such a meaningful connection, and keepsake if needed. I would do this if my handwriting wasn't actually just cuneiform. Trick or treating. It seems like a lot of families today are opting for the convenience of trunk or treating, where everybody gets their cars and park in a cul-de-sac and hand out candy from their trunks. I've heard people call it safer but honestly, walking around and seeing everyone's house decorations and costumes was the fun part, not just getting the candy. I think it's kind of sad that a lot of kids are missing out on the experience equals. This is disappointing. I took my daughter for the first time last year and she absolutely loved it to her it was so magical. I would never want this to stop. Subramisa, that time at the end of a big dinner with friends and loved ones where you just sit around the table drinking wine and shooting the crap. Forget doing the dishes. Forget running off to go and do whatever. Just make some time to sit and spend time with people and enjoy some good dessert and a nice glass of whatever without getting drunk for the sake of it. My entire family does this except we brew a pot of coffee. It's like an unspoken thing after dinner that every has a cup of coffee and hangs out. Can think of several. Native languages are dying off all over the world. Some organizations are trying to fight us by recording what they can. But we are still losing languages every day as the elders die. Nian signs are a dying art form. And thousands of signs stop working every year with no one to fix them. As fewer people know how to fix them. Gold leaf is another art form you hardly see anymore. Except maybe on the latest food trend or fire trucks. This is pretty niche but I'm Sami, we're the indigenous people of northern Scandinavia, commonly called Lapland but I strongly urge against that name. I'm a second generation American but my cousins are a big part of the reindeer herding tradition within the Sami, which is a small subgroup even within our small group. We've been doing it for a really long time. I believe archaeological evidence dates back to 2-3000 years ago. There are now about 6500 Sami actively engaged in reindeer husbandry and the number is dwindling. 
I don't know what the exact numbers were even 5100 years ago but I do know that the Swedish and Norwegian governments were, especially 50 years ago, steadily trying to incorporate us into mainstream culture. That includes outlawing a lot of things, like teaching children in our native language, singing traditional songs, and so on to severely limiting the ability to herd reindeer. My grandmother, for example, was taken from her family at age 13 and forced into a state school and never allowed to speak her language or see her family. She later emigrated to America to seek something better. I don't know if she found it. Today, we're a protected group and one of the only ones that are allowed to do so. But we now fight against a lot of youth being disinterested and wanting a mainstream, urban life. And I'm no different but I'm starting to feel weird about it now that I'm 32. And it's hard to not feel like our identity is being eroded and slipping away. I thought you literally meant dying tradition as in something you do for the deceased and I was going to say mummification. But then I saw the comments and realized I'd be dreadfully wrong. Hum. I think family dinners are dying in most American households. I know in most other countries people aren't so bent on work. So they make the time for regular family meals. I'm from an immigrant family and most nights of the week we all sit down for dinner together and realized from talking to some of my American friends most of them didn't do that regularly. I like your ideas better. I want a viking funeral. Send me out the sea and light me on fire. Bringing flowers on a first date. It's so cheesy, but no one has ever brought me flowers. I have, however, received countless dick pics. A lovely bucket of dongs. A lunchtime pint of beer in the UK. It's good for morale. There's a reason the navy used to give all the men rum every day right up until the 70s. So many jobs would be improved if you could frick off to the pub and drink a pint or two for an hour at lunch. One job I worked kept this tradition alive and remains the best workplace I've ever worked at. When I started my job, our office building was next door to a pub. We went there most lunchtimes. Then, after a couple of years, my team was merged with another team in another county, and our new office was on an industrial estate. Our first week there somebody asked the other team where the nearest pub was, and they reacted like we'd asked where we could go to torture some puppies. Punctuality. I was raised with a pretty strict dad and am now in the military. Showing up on time is a huge part of who I am. Early in my life it went from me getting compliments and a tabloids to now people making snarky comments like wow, you're here early or we never have people who actually show up at the exact time. Systems work better, it demonstrates mutual respect, it builds discipline and consistency and just makes us better people. My sister and her mom had a bet going of how late will my mother show up to the party. My sister won with 2 hours late. My mother is famous for being late. Always. I was raised with a motto a woman is always fashionably late. No, that's just rude. I think genuine thank you cards for big events, weddings, are important. If I'm about to spend $200 plus it's nice to hear that your presence was appreciated. In a similar vein, RSVPing for big events. Cheat codes in video games. Very few video games have them anymore. I think the last really big game I played that had cheat codes was Saints Row IV. Please bring them back. They will never come back now that microtransactions are common practice. Hear me out on this one. Avoiding work on Sunday keeping the Sabbath day holy. Regardless of your faith background, or lack thereof, I think everyone could appreciate having one day a week where you have no expectation to work and could identify with the world outside of consumerism. I grew up Mormon, where there is still a strong cultural expectation to avoid work, spending money or making others work on Sundays. One of the things I miss most from Mormonism is the relaxation and respite that practice brought. Nowadays it feels like all of my weeks blend together without consequence. It's just so difficult to avoid doing anything on Sunday without the community pressure support. I'm not religious at all, but I agree with this from the perspective that everyone deserves one day free from work and free to do the things that refresh your mind and body, whether that is prayer or exercise or just spending time with friends and family. Bringing your video games over to a friend's house and beating the game with them at night. I did it a lot when I was younger with Halo and the original Splinter Cell games, and I think a lot of younger kids won't experience it because online games are way more popular than local co-op. 
I miss ubiquitous couch co-op. Paying employees fairly for a fair day of work without expecting people to give up their family for a freaking paycheck. With modern tech, we should have been able to work less, instead all we've done is produce more without a proportional raise in wages, it's bulls. Enjoying things without having to show it off on social media. People used to do things for the sake of doing things, now it's just for their Instagram aesthetic. People still did that, when you visited they'd get out the vacation photos, film strips, or the worst one of all, the slideshow. I'm fairly sure that this is the fifth I'm answering this question with this, but I'm going to keep doing it until it comes back. Two adults should be able to consent to a duel to the death. While I agree, I feel like this is one of those situations where the complicated system is beneficial, as in make sure both parties really want to go through with it, but we still don't let people take their own lives for medical reasons so we are never going to let someone take another person's life for the sake of it. Family board games and movie nights. My family and I done this all through my childhood and still do regularly now. It's a tradition I hope I keep up when I have my own kids. Yelling worldster when a fight breaks out, since WS has stopped posting fights and now they just post unfunny videos or thoughts. Intervening in a fight to stop it, recording it and yelling worldster. Knitting, crocheting, sewing, quilting, weaving, and other crafting traditions that get passed between generations and done in groups. It's important we recognize how much work goes into making a piece of clothing and the importance of spending time with people in different generations. Dinners with everyone in the family that can physically make it. Someone cooks the food and everyone gathers around a dining room or kitchen table and enjoys the meal and talks. After everyone's done with their meal, they can either ask to be excused or continue talking to their parents about random stuff. If friends come over, they participate in the family meal. So many people I know just take their dinner and run away to their room and it's odd to me. I was always raised that dinner is important and a good way to check up on everyone and get advice or just shoot the crap about how sucky your boss or your school is. We should bring it back, man. Greeting the receptionist concierge secretary before asking for their assistance. The amount of times I've had people just come in and demand a level. Level 18. Straight off the bat is ridiculous. I'm a person. Say hello, be pleasant, damn it. When you talk to older people, they know a big portion of their neighborhood. That integration with your home is valuable, I think. I don't have it. I know my one neighbor's name and if he's sitting outside I rush past him to play video games. Manners. Saying hello, please, thank you. Past two years I have seen only a certain kind of people using it less and less. A friend of mine from college lived in the dorms and I lived with my folks in the next town. She jokingly said she wanted someone to send her mail as everyone else got mail and she didn't. I then bought a bunch of postcards from the area and randomly sent them to her throughout the school year. She loved it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.